Duke Clinical Research Institute has formed an exciting new center to work with innovators at Duke who have ideas of accelerating and improving clinical research. I met with Dr. Mickey cohen walkowitz who is Executive Director of iCubed, to find out what this incubator was for clinical research, what it's all about. So Mickey, thanks for joining me today. I understand you've got a new initiative, iCubed, which is about innovation in clinical trials, correct? Uh, correct, so thanks for having me. Uh, I'm here representing a team of experts that's building IQ at the Duke Clinical Research Institute, the DCRI. And we are um, building IQ so that we can find solutions to clinical research uh, problems. So if we think about over the last 20 years, all the different discoveries in technology and genetics and molecular biology, you can think of all the amazing discoveries. It still takes maybe 10, 15 years for those discoveries to get to patients. And we want to change that. We are here to change how we do clinical research. We want to make sure that it's faster, that it's cheaper and more inclusive. So first of all, iCubed, mm -hmm. you're great at acronyms in mm -hmm. DCRI. What does that stand for? I3 or iCube uh, has the three I's. So imagine, incubate, ignite. During the imagine phase, we support innovators by making sure that they are um, articulating their idea in a way that's trying to solve a problem. So what's the problem that you're trying to solve? What's mm -hmm. the solution? Uh, during the incubation phase, we um, support the innovators in making sure that the idea is, we figure out if it's a business. So mm -hmm. is this, uh, do you have a product that somebody's gonna buy? Is there a market for this? Um, and then during the Ignite phase, we help them get funded uh, and potentially form a company. So one of the problems is accelerating the time frame of clinical research. Mm -hmm. We saw that during COVID. Mm -hmm. So surely there were lessons learned there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel that with COVID, we took like 10 steps forward and it may be that we're taking out nine steps back. Yeah. Um, and I say that because um, these are the lessons that I can think about. So one is people want to participate in the clinical research process. They want to not only participate in trials, but they also want to help design them. They want to help in collecting data. They want to disseminate results. And the question for us is, what are the solutions that we're gonna develop to make sure that they can do it appropriately and with respect and with privacy? So that's one area. The other area is that people are comfortable participating in trials outside of a traditional clinic. So what we think about, you know, we go to a hospital to do a clinical trial. In COVID, we did trials, you know, at the home. We did them in mobile research unit. We did visits through teleresearch. And people love that. Um, and they want to have choice. So now it's our job to figure out, okay, how can we continue this momentum in that area? So how do you envision working with other parts of the university, like mm -hmm. the Office of Translation and Commercialization? Yeah, so we are uh, in working close partnership with OTC. Mm -hmm. They, as you know, offer tremendous resources for innovators and entrepreneurs across the whole campus. Um, and their focus is primarily on the business and entrepreneurial side of things. We are adding our expertise in clinical research to make sure that these innovations are packaged at the end into something that somebody wants to, wants to buy. So do you have an example of an innovation you're incubating? Yeah, we have several. So one thing, one that I can mention is during COVID, we saw a lot of um, activation of community based organizations um, in the clinical research process. And one innovation that we're working on is thinking about forming a, a network of community based organizations mm -hmm. that are all linked through data collection tools for clinical research with the idea that if community based organizations have the equipment and the tools to do clinical research, they're going to approach their participants and we're going to increase representation of minorities in clinical research, which is a huge problem that we have right. in this space. Well, it strikes me that many of the challenges are going to be facilitated by artificial intelligence, and I'm sure you're thinking about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're thinking a lot about that at multitude of levels. So right. one, which to me, or what I call the low hanging fruit is using artificial intelligence for document generation. And to me, that's something that we can do today. So there's a lot of document oh, generation goodness, in the yeah. clinical research process, all that can be expedited as long as we have the appropriate controls, because we need to verify that the documents that are created are you know, appropriate and, and valid. Um, that's something that we can do like today. Some of the risks are, um, you know, there's, there's bias. I guess it's some of those models, how they're constructed, they can be biased. Reproducing the output that comes from AI models sometimes is not straightforward or not very transparent. So we need to think about how we do that. And then certainly the accuracy of the outputs that are coming from AI. We need to figure out ways on how to verify that. So when you think five years down the road, mm -hmm. what does success look like for you? I think about three categories when I think about success for us. One is the innovations themselves. Are they solving the problems that we thought that they were gonna solve? Um, and then there's some business metrics like, you know, are they generating revenue? Are they growing and things of that nature? So one bucket is the innovations themselves. Um, the second bucket, it's a culture of innovation. And meaning, are we using um, IQ as a catalyst 
to ensure that a culture of innovation not only trickles through all of these CRI, but all of Duke School of Medicine. And by that, I mean, we have very smart people here that are working on their projects day in and day out. And we're kind of like concentrated on the task at hand. Mm -hmm. And we're not pausing to think about, wait a minute, I have this incredible solution. It can not only help my project, but it can help a multitude of other projects. So right. we want IQ to be able to infuse that and say, okay, wait a minute, just pause and, and let's take a look at that and maybe we can develop that further. And then lastly, is sort of like these moonshot projects, meaning are we pushing ourselves enough to think about how we can innovate, not only for tomorrow or the next five years, but 30 years from now or 50 years from now when we're not here. Well, this is so exciting. And I think you're tapping into something that DCRI does very well, which is bringing skills together and really advancing the field. So thanks again for your efforts and leadership.